everyone, this is Matt show with Intro Stats, and today we are looking at the ANOVA hypothesis test, one of my all-time favorite hypothesis tests. Uh, it was invented by R.A. Fisher, uh, and we're going to be looking at the ANOVA hypothesis test today. Now, we're just going to be introducing some of the key ideas behind the ANOVA hypothesis test. So, I think I mentioned before that um, now that we have an idea of how hypothesis tests work in general, we really want to focus in on four key things, right? The null and alternative hypothesis, what type of data do we need, what are the assumptions, and what is the test statistic for this test. Now ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, A-N-O, and then V-A variance is ANOVA. So it's referred to as ANOVA. We're just going to actually be looking at the one-way ANOVA. There, are, there is a two-way ANOVA that's more advanced. But for intro stats, usually we just get into the one-way ANOVA. All right, so what's the null and alternative hypothesis? Well, ANOVA is the classic categorical quantitative relationship test. So we're, we're basically trying to see if a categorical data set is somehow related to a quantitative data set. That's a good way to think about ANOVA as a classic sort of categorical quantitative relationship test. So, in general, well, how do I do that? Well, we're going to be using mean averages. Think of ANOVA as like a multiple mean average test. We went over the two population mean average, but what if I had three means or uh, four means or uh, the mean averages from five different populations? Uh, that would be an ANOVA. Okay, so an ANOVA, think of it as like a multiple mean average test. So uh, the null hypothesis looks kind of like uh, the two population mean test, except it can have more than just two. So instead of mu1 equals mu2, you got mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4 equals mu5 equals mu6, as many, as many uh, population means as you want to compare. And then the alternative is usually at least one is not equal. Notice I didn't say all of these have to be not equal for the null to be false. If even one of these was not equal, then the null would be false, right? We could reject the null. So you don't want to say that all the mu's are not equal. So usually we say something like the distribution is different or, but I like to say at least one is not equal. Now, what does that actually imply about the relationship? That's going to be the key thing today. Categorical quantitative relationships. That's what ANOVA is all about. So think about it this way. The categorical data set is what's breaking things up into groups, right? What, what, what decides your groups? And then the quantitative data set is being measured by the mean average. Okay, so we're measuring the quantitative data by mean average. So if the mean averages were the same in all your groups, then it doesn't really matter what group you're in, right? You get about the same average. That tells you that the grouping, the category, is probably not related to the quantitative variable. That's kind of an interesting idea that, that uh, goes through a lot of these relationship tests. Equal to usually implies not related. Okay? I think uh, when we first taught null and alternative hypothesis, I, I mentioned that sometimes the null is not related or no effect. Um, and this is the reason why, because to prove not related, you're going to have to show things are equal. In this case, if all the means were equal, it wouldn't matter what group I'm in, and that means the grouping, the categorical variable, is not related to the quantitative variable. That's how you want to think of ANOVA. But what if at least one is, uh, at least one is not equal, right? What if one of the group's mean average is very different than the other? Well, that would tell me it does matter. The grouping does matter. It does matter what group you're in. Okay, so um, if that's the case, then the categorical variable that's deciding the group is somehow related. Okay, that's a good way to think about it in your head. Does it matter what group I'm in or what population I'm in? Do I always get about the same thing no matter what population I'm in? Or do I get something different depending on what population the person or object is in? Okay, so at least one is not equal actually implies they are related. So the null hypothesis, the categorical and quantitative data are not related. Uh, alternative categorical and quantitative data are related. Okay? That's important to have that idea in your head that this is what the ANOVA is trying to do. 
All right, so what kind of what kind of data do we need? Well, obviously we need categorical quantitative data, right? Usually it's like categorical quantitative ordered pair data. So you might ask somebody um, uh, what country they were born in and then maybe their salary, right? So I might have you know, a listing of all the different countries that people were from and then all the sa their salaries. I might have to make all the salaries into a common currency, uh, but basically all the salaries in the countries would be like in two data sets. But that's actually, um, a lot of computer programs would want the data like that. They'll have a categorical data set and a quantitative data set right next to each other from the same people. But really what you really want to think of in ANOVA though is when you can separate it out. So if I had all the people from each country, I could separate them out. I could sort, right? I could, remember we talked about sorting with Excel. You could sort it out and I could put, you know, all the people, all the salaries from people from the U.S. in one data set and all the salaries from people from France in one data set and all the salaries from people from, um, um, let's suppose Canada in one data set, right? Any, whatever the countries are, I could separate them out. And that's a good way of thinking about it because once you separate it out, now you've got usually three or more quantitative data sets and they're all measuring sort of the same variable. In this case, it would be salary, right? So that's sort of what your data is going to look like. Now, um, ANOVA was actually invented by uh, a very, very famous statistician, R.A. Fisher. He's one of the fathers of statistics. He invented a lot of the stuff that we teach you in, in, in intro stats. Uh, very, very famous. Also, um, the ANOVA test, the one-way ANOVA test, is a right-tailed test. Now, that's very interesting because when we had the two-population mean test, it could be two-tail, left-tail, right-tail, if, you know, if it was greater than or less than in the, eight, in the alternative hypothesis or not equal. Um, but when you get to multiple populations, once you get beyond two population, everything changes. Usually what they try to do now is condense it into one right-tailed hypothesis test. And that's what ANOVA does. It kind of condenses it. So think of it as a right-tailed test. And when we calculate the p-value or we use randomized simulation, it's always going to be in the right tail when you're dealing with ANOVA. And there's some reasons behind that, by the way. So, one of the, uh, one of the, one of the assumptions for ANOVA, right? That would be our, our next topic here. So I put the assumptions over here. Um, ANOVA, again, remember, is just, it's almost like the two population mean average test, but you got more means now, right? So it actually has a lot of the same ideas as we went over the independent uh, two population mean uh, test. So what we would want, assumptions, of course, we would want random sample data or data that, that represents the population as best as we can. That usually means random sample data. Um, I want individuals within the samples and between the samples to be independent of each other. Okay, so notice we are saying uh, individuals between the samples and within the samples should be independent. Now that's kind of interesting because when it's, when it's written as categorical quantitative data, usually it's ordered pair. I mean, the, the, data, the categorical and quantitative data sets are, might come from the same person. So they're not independent of each other. But that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about when you separate it out. If you separate it out, and I have all these salaries from people from the U.S. and salaries from people from France and salaries from people from Canada and all these other countries. I shouldn't have people that are related inside each data set, within, and I shouldn't have people that are related between the data sets. Right? Basically, all the individuals should, should not be related to each other. Um, okay, so that's our second assumption. If you notice, that looks very similar to what we did with two population mean. And then we got sample sizes uh, at least 30 or normal, right? Sample sizes should be at least 30 or the sample should have a normal distribution or a bell shape, right? So that's the same, same assumptions as two population mean, really. But we do have one new one. Uh, and this new one is, stems from the idea of ANOVA. ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, right? Variance. Variance is an important word, right? 
Um, so if you guys remember when we studied um, basic statistics in, in, uh, earlier in the, in the uh, videos, variance is one of the measures of spread. It's a measure of how, um, how far numbers are from the mean of a data set, right? It's kind of basically the square of the standard deviation, or you can think of it as the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Um, so basically, we don't want, uh, we want the variances to be pretty close in our individual data sets. Um, so if one data set has a, a lot bit more variation than another, um, it can sort of overwhelm and kind of mess up our calculations. So usually what statisticians look for is no standard deviation for any sample should be more than twice as large as any other sample. So in other words, the standard deviations of each of my separated data sets should be pretty close. What we look for is no, no data set has a standard deviation more than twice as big as any other. So that's the assumptions. Uh, all right. Well, let's get this idea of variance real quick. Variance. Anybody remember the formula for variance? I'll be impressed if you remember it. Uh, it rem it's basically, if you guys remember, it's the sum of squares, sum of squares, we took, uh, in, if you're doing the variance of one data set, you would, you would uh, subtract every number in the data set minus the mean, square it, and then add up all the squares of the differences, divided by the degrees of freedom. If we were in one data set, if you're looking at the variance of one data set, the degrees of freedom would be n minus 1, right? How many numbers were in your data set? Minus 1. But the ANOVA calculation is a much more sort of advanced type of variance calculation. It's still a sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom, but it's a different kind of variance. It's not talking about the variance of one data set. Remember, you got three, four, five, six, seven quantitative data sets, okay? So, um, R.A. Fisher came up with the idea of the, what we call the F-test statistic. Um, sometimes people refer to it as the law of total variation, but it is rather brilliant that... Uh